Isaiah chapter 13, a message for Babylon. Grab your Bibles, read along as today we are reading through Isaiah chapter 13. If you would like a Bible, I'd love to hook you up with one. Um, otherwise, the Bible app, Bible Gateway, um, or your own physical Bible. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Um, yesterday... Uh, was a song of praise for salvation, praising God for saving not only the Israelites, but the world. Um, and it was um, also foreshadowing that God is going to live and dwell among us. That is something that has been promised throughout the book of Isaiah. Um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the sins of the Israelites, the sins of Assyria, and how that's going to end up panning out and how there's going to be a remnant that remain that God is going to rise up the Messiah out of and he will be God dwelling among us and it's uh yeah yesterday we sang a song of praise about that uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes but yeah that's the quick summary of everything um that we've read thus far and I forgot how amazingly sprinkled the Jesus hints are throughout Isaiah. Um, I have a couple go-to chapters that we are nowhere near yet that I like to go and read so it's going to continue to be revealed and it's going to continue to be revealed and continue to be revealed as we go forward. So I'm really excited for that. But for now, um, there is a section in here that is in blue so once we are done reading that we will, um, uh, read, once we're done reading chapter 13, we're going to read the part in blue, which is something that Jesus directly quotes. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, without further ado, uh, let's start reading Isaiah chapter 13. <clears throat> A message about Babylon. Isaiah, son of Amos, received this message concerning the destruction of Babylon. Raise a single a signal flag on a bare hilltop. Call up an army against Babylon. Wave your hand to encourage them as they march into the places of the high and mighty. I, the Lord, have directed these soldiers for this task. Yes, I have called mighty warriors to express my anger, and they will rejoice when I am exalted. Hear the noise on the mountains. Listen as the vast armies march. In, um, it is the noise and shouting of many nations. The Lord of Heaven's army has called his, this army together. They come from distant countries, from beyond the furthest horizons. They are the Lord's weapon to carry out his anger. With them, he will destroy the whole land. Scream in terror. For the day of the Lord has arrived. The time for the Almighty to destroy. Every arm is paralyzed with fear. Every heart melts. And people are terrified. Pangs of anguish grip them. Like those of a woman in labor. They look helplessly at one another. Their faces aflame with fear. For see, the day of the Lord is coming. The terrible day of his fury and fierce anger. The land will be made desolate. And all the sinners destroyed with it. The heavens will be black above them. The stars will give no light. The sun will be dark when it rises. And the moon will provide no light. I, the Lord, will punish the world for its evil. And the wicked for their sin. I will crush the arrogance of the proud and the humble and the... Pr the um, I will crush the arrogance of the proud and humble. The pride of the mighty. I will make people scarier than gold. Scarcer than gold. More rare than the fine gold of Ophir. For I will shake the heavens, 
the earth will move from its place when the Lord of Heaven's armies displays his wrath in the day of his fierce anger. Everyone in Babylon will run about like a haunted gazelle, like sheep without a shepherd. They will try to find their own people and flee to their own land. Anyone who is captured will be cut down, run through with a sword. Their little children will be dashed to death before their eyes. Their homes will be sacked and their wives will be raped. Look, I will stir up the Medes against Babylon. They cannot be trampled, uh, sorry, they cannot be temp tempted by silver or bribed with gold. The attacking armies will shoot down the young men with arrows. They will have no mercy on helpless babies and will show no compassion for children. Babylon, the most glorious of kingdoms, the flower of uh, Sheldon pride, will be devastated like Sodom and Gomorrah when God destroyed them. Babylon will never be inhabited again. It will remain empty for generation after generation. Nomads will refuse to camp there, and shepherds will not bed down their sheep. Desert animals will move into their ruined city, and the houses will be haunted by howling creatures. Owls will live among the ruins, and wild goats will go there to dance. Hyenas will howl in its fortresses, and jackals will make dens in its, in its luxurious places. Babylon's days are numbered. Its time of destruction will soon arrive. <coughs> May God add a blessing to the reading of Isaiah chapter 13. Whew. This is definitely a, a heavy one. Um, so before we get into the heaviness of it. Um, Isaiah 13, uh, verses 10 to 14. Uh, the heavens will be black above them. The stars will give no light. The sun will be dark when it rises, and the moon will provide no light. I, the Lord, will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their sins. I will crush the arrogance of the proud and humble the pride of the mighty. I will make people scarcer than gold and move rare and move rare than and more rare sorry more rare than the pride then I gotta use my finger I'm becoming dyslexic sorry uh, more rare than the fine gold of Ophir for I will shake the heavens and the earth will move from its place when the Lord of Heaven's army displays his wrath in the day of his fierce anger Everyone in Babylon will run about like a haunted gazelle, like a sheep without a shepherd. They will try to find their own people and flee to their own land. Jesus directly quotes this passage when he is foretelling the future judgment when the Son of Man comes in Matthew 24, 27, and 29. Ooh. So I'm going to flip there really quickly and just see what that say is. 24 and 29. Sorry. 24, 27 to 29. Um, so, um, this is the quote. I'll start with the beginning of the passage. So it's actually starting with 26. Um, so, if someone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go or look. Or, look, he is hiding here. Don't believe it. For as the lightning flashes in the east and the sun shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering vultures show their carcasses nearby, so the signs uh, uh, indicate that the end is near. Immediately after anguish of those days. The sun will be dark and the moon will give no light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Um, then at last the Son of Man is coming and will appear in the heavens and there will be a deep mourning among all the peoples. Um, 
of the earth. No, some really happy stuff. But yeah, we see that quote there. It's a much shorter quote than the whole uh, bit. But like the heavens being shaken. Um, bit there. So it's interesting. Jesus once again brings us back to, um, you know, the book of Isaiah. Back to the fall of Babylon. This city known for all its wealth and like a city that a lot of people were envious of and wanted to live there and so on and so forth and you know it's gonna fall um and one of the things that really stood out to me as we were reading this is one of god's greatest punishments is letting us do what we want like God not stepping in, not interfering, not going like, hey, don't do this, and calling us out. Like, that's one of God's greatest punishments. Uh, fine, if you want to sin, I'm just going to let you sin. And it, I feel like, and I could be off base, but I feel like this is one of the things that is happening here. And he's taking credit for not stepping in, not going, hey, I want to stop this army from coming. Babylon has it coming. And I'm going to let them deal with their consequences. And the consequences is other army rising up. And I'm not going to step in and interfere. And But instead of saying, well, it's all on you. Because you had it coming. You did this. This other army is going to come. And they're going to do some awful things. And it's all on you. It seems like he's just stepping back. And he's like, cool. I'm going to let this sin happen. But you know what? I'm going to take the blame for it. Foreshadowing what Jesus does in our own lives. There is some horrific things that end up happening that he takes the credit for. Much like what Jesus does in our own lives. No matter how horrific our sin is, he is willing to take that upon himself on the cross and he has done it. He has done it. The most horrific things that you have done, he has, he has taken the internal punishment for that with him on the cross. He has done it. One last time, he has done it. And that's what I think is happening here. It's not necessarily like, hey, here's this army that, you know, and all this stuff, and this is what's going to happen. I think he's just letting it happen, and he's taking the blame for not interfering. And much like Jesus. It's one of the other things that I'm seeing here. Um, foreshadows uh, other future things. And like the fall of Babylon may have happened. But then Jesus also quotes this for the future. So this is about a specific event. And so much more than the specific event. So we have that being foreshadowed for the end of everything. That we know here on this earth. The end times. That it also is signs of the beginning of the end and the second coming of uh, Jesus. Um, which is not going to be necessarily super smooth. Anyways, um, from what we were reading. But we could have things really, really wrong. Most people don't believe that it's going to be super smooth because of revelations. Uh, which we've already read through. That sin is going to be accounted for. <clears throat> um, and we will be slaughtered. Um, but, um, yeah, I just, it strikes me as God taking that. And then this whole thing is foreshadowing how the end is going to be. We've had foreshadowing of what it, heaven's like when the lion and the lamb are together and things are good. And then we have what it's like in the world of sin as everything is falling apart. It strikes me as a metaphor for a lot of different things and an example for a lot of things. So this specific event speaks to things beyond itself. And that's one of the interesting things with Jesus quoting this too. Is it's not speculation that, okay, this is just about Babylon. But it's also about something more. 
Jesus made it about something more. So we see that that foreshadowing of great nations falling because of the, they've taken their eyes off of God. Nations that you know are supposed to be followers, not following, that represent God to the world. Um, yeah. Um, and then it's interesting that like basically nothing like their their luxurious places, jackals and all these wild animals will take out. I don't know why, but that just stands out to me too. It's interesting. Babylon, the most glorious kingdom, the flower of the Shaldeen's pride, will be devastated like Sodom and Gomorrah when God destroyed them. Right? Um, pretty powerful things there when sin just takes over, corrupts, and leads to that ultimate destruction. And it's also a little bit maybe about our own lives when we let sin completely take over us and we we refuse God. Um, then I just the the beginning part. Even though it's talking about hero, horrific things, it's done in such a nice, like kind of poetic way. Even like the the screaming terror for the day of the Lord has arrived, the time for the Almighty to destroy every arm paralyzed with fear. Every heart melts and the people are terrified. Pangs of anguish grip them like a woman in labor. They are helpless. They're, they look helplessly to one another, their faces aflame with fear. Like, this is like dark, scary stuff. But it's like worked into some poetry thing, so now, like, we, like, I can picture that this feels like a horror movie. This feels like also like a really good destruction movie where you care about the people and you can see this on them, uh, on their faces and the, the destruction movies and so on and so forth. The natural disaster movies is what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's like done very poetically, but it's going to like stick with me for a little bit. Like, it sounds good, but it's powerful imagery. And God's taking credit for it. So, on that note, let us pray. A.J.C. Awesome Jesus Christ. I think that one of your greatest punishments is just letting us continue in sin. And if we find ourselves in that place, let us turn to you for help. Help to break free. Help to get out. Help to strengthen ourselves. Be strengthened by you to not just sit in our sin. Especially if we're sitting in our sin and still talking about you, Lord. Still lifting you up. Still striving for you. Help us to not be held down by our relapses. And for those with addictions, Lord, help them to find the right help and to get what they need. There's a lot of sickness and stuff going around as well, Lord, right now. So I lift up all my friends that are sick with the cold or flu or COVID. Um, you know, it seems like it's around every corner right now. Um, so I lift that up to you, Lord, that you can bring healing upon the world. You know, we sang praises yesterday about your salvation, and may we do that again today. Thank you for all the ways that you love us, you bless us, you guide us, and you direct us. You are awesome, Lord. And thank you for taking our sins upon you, for taking credit for all the awful things that we do and bearing the punishment ultimately conquering death thank you for how you love us and what you have done for us thank you Lord and help us to seek justice to love mercy and to walk humbly 
with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys very much once again. Have a fantastic day. God bless. Uh, yeah. Bye.